So in over a decade of having a business, what is the best piece of advice I've ever received? Today, I'm answering a question from one of you, my listeners, and I'm actually going to talk about the four best pieces of advice because I couldn't just narrow it down to one. These are the pieces that have shaped my business. Welcome to Explore Your Enthusiasm, episode 202 with me, Tara Swiger. Today, I'm answering a question sent in on the hotline. If you want to ask me a question, just call me, 567-393-8272. That's 567-EYE for Explore Your Enthusiasm and Tara, T-A-R-A. So Michelle asks, Hi, Tara. It's Michelle with Made by Me. I've been listening to your podcast for about three years and a member of the Starship for about two, and I just love it, and I've learned so much from you about life and my business behind-the-scenes things from the Starship and from watching your podcast and um, the different things that you post. My question for you is, what is the best piece of advice you've been given? Thank you so much for your question, Michelle. Thank you for all the sweet things you said. So I have a few different answers for different points in my career. I've needed different advice at different times. So the first piece of advice very early on in my business is become an expert. This advice shaped my early year in business and helped it grow way back in 2006 to 2009. So Naomi of ittybiz.com, who's still around, taught me this, to become an expert. She'd say it throughout her blog posts and be and around her classes, that if you want to create effective marketing, which is what she was teaching, you need to become an expert. You need to become an expert in a micro niche. I don't think that word existed then, but we have it now. A micro niche, and it'll be much easier for people to talk about you because they'll really get what you do. It's like putting handles on your work so people can carry it around. When they think of that topic, they'll think of you, which leads to sales, and it leads to press, and it leads to word of mouth. So how I applied this lesson, from the start, I didn't just make hand-spun, hand-dyed yarn. I sourced ethical fiber and yarn from women's co-op in Nepal to wool mill ends to locally spun hemp. So my thing was, way before a big yarn company even had organic yarn, and we used to search organic wool, nothing would come up. My thing was, from the start, ethically sourced yarn. But I didn't really make a big deal out of it. So at the time, I heard this advice to become an expert. I had written about my choices of yarn maybe once or twice on my blog, and I had it on my yarn labels, but I didn't write about it a lot. And I hadn't really focused my brand in any way. I didn't have a brand at all. And at first, I just dismissed Naomi's advice as being for people who are going to sell info products. So she worked with a lot of coaches and service providers like yoga teachers and people who created classes, which I did not do at the time. And I thought this doesn't apply to my product-based business. But then I realized that if I became an expert, at least among knitters, about sustainably sourced yarn, I could then talk about my yarn in a more interesting way than just saying buy my yarn. So I did. Not only did I research and learn, but I also started writing about it on my blog. I wrote about why organic cotton had such a huge environmental impact, which by the way, buying organic cotton over traditionally produced chemically drenched cotton is one of the single best things you can do for the environment and greenhouse gases. I also wrote about the difference between buying mass-produced wool roving and local wool, how sheep were treated, etc. And I started visiting local farms, even though there weren't many, and featuring those fiber farmers on my blog. I also made some yarn from recycled material. Some of it I bought, like recycled silk sari, recycled banana fiber, but some of it that I just recycled from my own life. Like I made a skein of yarn that used silk tea bags um, from a specific tea company. They had their tea in, in silk tea bags. I spun the tea bags into the wool and I dyed the wool with the tea. Now, the results from following this advice is that it enabled me to quit my day job. The tea dyed yarn photo, because I took a lot of pretty photos of it and I sold it for like $55, it was licensed for a book about green knitting. So my photo appeared in a book about green knitting and I was interviewed as a green expert for Knitting Magazine. And before even any of that press, my yarn started selling out when I would post it because people had followed the story of the yarn from beginning to end on my blog and on Flickr before the days of Instagram or Facebook. So because I was sharing the story behind the yarn, it was selling better. Because I was doing interesting things with yarn, people started following me. So this was before Facebook, before Instagram, before I had a podcast. I wrote two to three times a week on my blog. I sent out a monthly email list to like 100, 150 people. And I posted on Flickr and Twitter photos of my yarn, my process. I asked questions. 
And keep in mind, Flickr wouldn't even let you link back to your shop. So my tools and my skills were limited, but I focused, I focused on one specific area and that's what I talked about. The thing is, becoming an expert gave me something to write about, something specific to share. So instead of constantly wondering what I should write about next, I focused in on my expertise, and that in turn gave people some way to understand my work, something to talk about, and when they were writing an article or looking for photos, they knew to come to me because that's what I was doing. So an excellent piece of advice. Second piece of advice, teach people what you're learning. This is almost in opposition to becoming an expert. The idea is teach people what you're learning as you're learning it. You do not have to be the big expert. I did not wait until I had a bachelor's degree in environmental science before I started talking about environmentally friendly yarn. Basically, as you learn something, then share it. So I don't ever remember her saying this directly, but I learned this by hanging out with and reading Javi Brooks. Uh, shout out to those of you who I met back in the day on FluentSelf.com. So this is what it sparked everything I do today. Everything came from the idea of teaching what you're learning. When I was learning about environmentally friendly yarn, I started teaching it. When I started learning about how to run a business and marketing communication in my MBA program, I started teaching it. So I applied this lesson as soon as I quit my day job. So I told you a little bit, I was applying what I, I was teaching what I was learning right from the day. I was writing, communicating, social mediaing it up on what I had been learning. But when I quit my day job, this really took off because I decided to use that quitting my day job as a marketing opportunity, make a big deal about it. Um, this was actually prompted by my friend Leonie Dawson, who now is my mentor in my doTERRA business. So it's just crazy how things come full circle. She was like, girl, you quit your job, make a big freaking deal about it. So I had a sale, I did daily giveaways, and the important part, I did a Twitter Q&A where people could ask me anything, especially about how I quit my job, and then I did a series of blog posts. I've linked up these blog posts in the transcript. You can download the transcript at tarasweiger.com slash podcast202, and I reread these blog posts recently. They are adorable and awesome and sweet, and I loved reading about how I was seeing my journey at the time like how I'd seen everything that led up to that point when so much has changed since then, because back in 2009. So I use those posts to share what I learned as I was learning it. And the reaction to those posts and that Twitter chat were not what I expected. Uh, it kind of went crazy of people asking more and more questions about how I quit my day job. And I freaking loved talking about it because it was so exciting and I really wanted other people to be able to do it too. So my email inbox filled up with questions like, how did you start a business? How did you know you'll make enough to quit your day job? What is the one thing that created this success? Spoiler alert, there is no one thing for anyone. No one I've ever met has one thing that created their success. So I decided to do what ha Javi said and teach what I was learning, just like I had been with the environmentally friendly yarn. So I wasn't sure if anybody was going to be interested in learning from me. I wasn't sure I knew enough. I wasn't sure that they would like how I explained things. So I tested it. I set up a series of free Q&A conference calls, which is so 2009. I wish I had live video back then. Over 50 people signed up to come to them. They signed up to a separate list to find out specifically, to talk to me specifically about their craft business. And as a side note, one of the, the callers on the call was Carrie Chapin. Um, she came to my first one and she asked about her felt mitten business. I recently looked up, I have the transcripts all saved in Google. And uh, the next year, the very next year, she wrote Handmade Marketplace and she interviewed me for it. So those Q&A calls had far reaching implications. Because based on the questions I was getting, I could see where the gaps were in people's knowledge and the available resources. So keep in mind, back in 2009, Etsy barely had a blog that didn't even post every day. And I had written a series of blog posts about marketing communication when I was taking a class in my MBA program about marketing communication. Um, and that was early 2009 I wrote this. So I was holding these Q&A calls early 2010, and I could tell people had questions, but weren't knowing what questions to ask for. Like, what do you even Google? And I didn't think people were looking at it systematically. I wanted to show them how to look at their business and marketing communication holistically and create a marketing plan that's going to answer the right questions. The right questions are, who is my customer? What online platform does she use? What's special about my work? How do I communicate that? So I wrote my first class, Share Your Handmade Goodness, in early 2010, and it was three weeks of one-hour telephone calls that you would dial in for, and I would send you a recording, and worksheets. 
And I kept creating more and more classes because I kept getting more and more questions. And one, I recently remembered because I was looking all this up for this blog, this podcast episode, one was about Twitter and it was so good. I put really good information, but it only had one student. It's no longer available. Um, after creating these classes, as I was creating these classes, just teaching what I was learning as I was learning it. Hey guys, this is what worked for me. Is it thinking about who my who my customer is and how I can specialize and how do I communicate that? Teaching the 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 mechanics of that and a system for that and worksheets that ask you to do it. That just became my thing. I loved doing it. I loved teaching. And Shannon of Cooperative Press asked me if I wanted to turn those classes into a book. And she asked me that in 2012, 2011, and the book Market Yourself was published in 2012, all just by teaching what I was learning. All of this to say, I did not set out to have a teaching business. I just listened to what questions people had, and I answered them. I taught what I was learning, not just what I was an expert in. But by following advice number one, I created a very tiny niche at the time, organic yarn was a very tiny niche, that I decided to become an expert in, and then I continued to share as I was learning. So I want you to think about, what could you become an expert in? What tiny bit does it make sense that your customers are going to be interested in? How could you become an expert? And then teach as you're learning it. Don't wait till you have all of the knowledge. This advice has served me so well since then. Just share what you're learning in the moment. Whenever I do this on a podcast, it resonates with you guys so much more than what I try to teach or speak on the stuff I learned years ago. If even the stuff that I've heavily researched years ago, you'd so much rather hear what I'm learning in the moment. And we all are, as a community, growing and changing. And by sharing what I'm learning, I'm staying on top of our growth curve, on top of our leading edge. Because the stuff that I needed to talk about, that I needed to learn in 2010 and 2011, isn't the, like, now those answers are easily findable. Many of us are past that. Many of you just are automatically past that because Instagram has been in your life for years and years. Now, the corollary to this is to not teach what you don't know. I regularly point people to other teachers if they want to learn something I either don't want to teach or that I don't know that much about and I don't feel excited to learn about. So a lot of Starship captains actually graduate um, out of the Starship after growing their business to a certain point. It's usually around mid six figures because they need to learn stuff I never had to learn about. I never grew my yarn company past um, a full-time income for myself. So they need to learn about things like inventory, taxes, employees, and I don't want to teach about that. <laughs> I don't want to learn about that for a, uh, you know, large size handmade product based business. So I'm open and honest about that because my job is to teach what I am learning. The third piece of advice is document, don't create. Now, you might know where I got this. Gary Vaynerchuk says this all of the time. In fact, here's a great video that explains the concept and I'm going to link it up in my show notes about document don't create. What it means, short version, is you don't have to create new marketing stuff, just document your process of whatever you're doing in your business. If you're starting a business, document the creation of your business. If you're creating a new product, document the process. If you're labeling your packages all day to send out, document that. You don't have to create some new piece of content, document what you're doing in your day. Now, Instagram stories, Snapchat, Facebook stories makes this so much more easy and so much more obvious than maybe it had ever been before. So how I've used this is I was pretty much doing this in the beginning of my business. I was I was just blogging about things as they came to me, as I got an idea. I was posting on Flickr when I would make stuff and asking for feedback. But as more and more social media tools proliferated through the years, and I started to build platforms on many of them, well, it can just be overwhelming. And... I was watching Gary Vee about a year ago, and he says, document, don't create. And it just freed me up not to make any more fancy marketing materials on all of my social media. So I will absolutely create marketing materials for a specific launch, but just a day-to-day -day sharing regularly across all of these platforms, just document. So I just share what is happening. I document it as it's happening. This is what I'm working on. This is what I'm learning. This is what's coming up. When I'm doing so much, like the last few months with travel and online and the Starship opening and PayPal changing, 
I just use Instagram stories and my blog on YouTube to document what's going on behind the scenes and in my own head. What am I learning? What am I thinking about? This has allowed me to do a lot more than if I was trying to perfectly create perfect things. It's allowed me to reach a lot more people because I'm doing it a lot more and it's allowed me to build more loyalty and consistency and trust because I'm doing it consistently. So I have two podcasts, three YouTube videos, which by the way, if you're not subscribed to me there, you are missing daily videos in April. I have several Facebook pages. I have several Facebook groups for people I'm mentoring, for Starship Captains, for customers, and for listeners. So for those of you who are listening, Take Care of Yourself with Tara Swiger is the Facebook group you should be in. I also do daily Instagram posts, several Instagram stories a day on both Instagram accounts, Tara Swiger and Essential Enthusiasm. I do weekly webinars and live workshops around the country and locally. All of it is built on documenting. So my classes, my podcast episodes, and my workshops, those are all planned, created content. Everything around them, the YouTube channel, the Facebook groups, the Facebook pages, the Instagram posts, those are documenting the creating and the doing of the stuff. So for my crafty biz business, where I help your creative business, I am documenting what you're asking me, what issues my listeners and captains are having, what is coming up when we talk to each other. I'm documenting that, that conversation. For my doTERRA essential oil business, I'm documenting my own learning about the essential oils and how I actually use them day by day and how I take care of myself. That's it. So by documenting and not creating, all of these channels just come. Not, not easily, but from a sense of flowing, like from living my life, all of those channels I listed, which can sound like a lot and people think is like, you're doing so much. No, it's flowing out of what's happening in my life. Even the created bits, this podcast, the workshops, the webinars, those are created by what's going on. Like this episode is created by Michelle sending in a question. I didn't have to come up with it new. I just had to sit down and answer the question and let it flow of what came up. So the fourth piece of advice that has totally shaped my business since day one is from my dad. You haven't failed until you quit. You haven't failed until you quit. Everything short of quitting is not failure. It's just on your way to success. So I wanted to end with this one because it is the most life-changing, the most persistent, the most consistent in everything I do. My dad said it to me when I told him I was quitting my day job to make yarn full-time. Can you imagine that call? Dad, I have a bachelor's degree in French lit and I'm going to quit my day job at an office to make yarn full time. He was super encouraging. And I told him I was afraid it was going to crash and burn. But he was so certain that I wouldn't fail. He said, I'm sure you won't fail. And I was like, how can you possibly know that? Because you're definitely not a yarn expert. and You don't even know that knitters are like a thing. And he said in reply, well, you haven't failed until you've quit. And I know you won't quit. So true. You get to decide when you quit. Some things you'll want to quit. It's good to quit. Excellent to quit. Let them go. So you get to decide if it is a failed or if you just decide to let it go. And anything up until the point where you totally give up, no matter how bad it is, no matter how far you are from your goal, no matter how much it did not turn out the way you had planned, it isn't failure. It's data. It's data leading up to your eventual success. How do I know? Because if you don't quit and you keep going and you keep learning from the data, you will succeed. That's it. Success is like data collection over time. That's it. And action. This keeps me going in hard times. This, you haven't failed until you've quit. And I hope that this and all the lessons that we talked about today help you in your own business or life journey. I hope that they speak to you. One of them at least speaks to you where you are and that they help you get where you want to go. If you want a transcript of this episode, along with links to those blog posts I wrote in 2009, head to taraswiger.com slash podcast 202, that's 202, scroll down and put your email address in the bottom of the page. So when you go to that, you'll scroll past the video and the image and you'll see a big box. If you put your email address in there, we'll send you the transcript immediately and you'll have access to the past 150 podcast transcripts and worksheets and special things I've created for you guys. So don't forget to join up with my Facebook group, Take Care of Yourself with Tara Swiger, where you're going to get access to free weekly videos, Q&As, and we're starting a book club in a couple weeks. So join us there, Take Care of Yourself with Tara Swiger on Facebook. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a very enthusiastic day.